One device where, uh, one rather uh, elegant device, is called the kinetic inductance detector, uh, and it uses photon-assisted pair breaking uh, to uh, effect the detection mechanism. It turns out to be essential to use um, superconductors in order to be able to make this kind of device. It wouldn't be possible to make uh, a similar device out of normal uh, metals. And the reason for this is that the surface impedance of a superconductor is very critically dependent on its temperature, uh, which is not true of a normal uh, metal. Kinetic inductance detector really is a thin film device. Uh, what one typically has is a superconducting transmission line operating at a few gigahertz, and this winds its way uh, over the surface of the chip, but then lightly coupled, in fact capacitively coupled, side of this line are thin film superconducting resonators. And what happens here is that an X-ray uh, comes in, it get ab gets absorbed in the tantalum, uh, it breaks superconducting pairs, it produces a large shower of quasi-particles, these get then injected into the resonator, the resonator changes frequency, and we can detect the presence of that uh, photon. You can think of this as an effective temperature uh, increase in the material. Well, we're looking at signals from a kinetic inductance detector here. Um, what we can see on the left is a phase shift coming from a kinetic inductance detector as a function of temperature. Inductance detector resonates at a particular frequency at a particular temperature. So by changing the temperature we can monitor the resonance uh, frequency. Uh, these kinetic inductance detectors work at about uh, 20 millikelvin, so extremely cold. Absorption of the photon uh, reflects itself in a change of the surface impedance, which means the microwave properties of the film change. And it's those microwave properties which have been uh, read out as the readout uh, circuit of the detector itself. The really exciting thing about this device is that in principle we can hang uh, a, whole, a large number of resonators off, the, uh, resonators off the same transmission line and therefore we can start to build up imaging arrays. Each of the uh, green blocks corresponds to uh, a single antenna and uh, what's happening here is that each of these individual antennas have been uh, read out by a transmission line which winds its way all the way around the outside. Ambition is to build imaging arrays which perhaps have th many thousands of pixels and then eventually we would put a chip like this in the focal plane of a telescope for the purposes of uh, making images of astronomical sources. The terahertz frequency range has lots of important characteristics that it, that it may be used therefore for utilitarian purposes, for things that will affect our everyday lives. Um, and there are an exceedingly large number of applications from associated with medical imaging, industrial process control, dentistry, uh, all, all sorts of topics. And you'll see over the next 20 years, you'll see this grow, you'll see that uh, terahertz cameras, terahertz, terahertz instruments starting to be uh, commonplace in the world around us. One example of this is in uh, imaging for security applications. It turns out that terahertz radiation passes through um, materials like plastics and uh, fabrics really rather easily, uh, but of course it doesn't uh, pass through other uh, denser materials like metals. And so what one can do is you can take a, a photograph of somebody at terahertz uh, frequencies and you'll see, I'm afraid, you will see through their clothes <coughs> and you will reveal uh, uh, any hidden objects beneath.